Devil species, devil species, unknown misery, unknown misery, cryptic, cryptic. You roll with cheeky rappers now, we rebuke them. You roll with picky lovers now. Boom! What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com with Isatori right here, the Sandman here. Yo. The science freak, along with CEO Stephen Adelaide. Thank you guys for having Hi. me here. Um, you, I got to tell you, in all my years in this industry, and, and I'm someone who I can take credit for actually creating a category. Um, when I first came out, relaunched a category that had been in existence, but I brought it back, I remember getting a couple questions. I literally have to beg people to ask about it so I could talk about it. I posted a video about BioGrow, which I've been taking, and I'm a fan of, as you guys know. Um, just simply for the fact people behind it are genius. Um, even in my first video, I said, look, I'm not going to make any claims yet, but the people behind this, they're smart. They know what they're doing. So I trust it. And uh, that's why I'm here right now. And I have, you guys gave us this many questions. So hopefully this is the most comprehensive, um, complete Q and a ever done on a new category. So we're really excited to be here. Thank you so much for the questions. And anything you guys want to lead off with before I get into this? Mark, I'm just impressed with how good you look today, man. You're looking sharp. Man. It's the polo, man. It's the yeah. colors. TigerFitness.com. Looking sharp, man. I try. I try. Usually I'm just wearing whatever brand shirt I have that day. Representing well today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks I'm for coming out here. I really appreciate it. And, you know, thanks for taking me running up bleachers in the mountains today. Because I think I died. I really, I'm amazed I'm sitting here right now. Actually, I'm impressed at your ability to handle the altitude. Yeah. Most people come here, they, they feel uh, pretty crappy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been great. But with, without further ado, you want to jump into this uh, head first? Let's jump right in. Okay. I'm going to go in. This is from Ricky Krajewski is his name on YouTube. That sounds like his real name because most of these are just funny handles, you know, like the next one is Gnarly0531. I'm guessing that's not his real name. <laughs> Ricky asked, I guess I'm confused on what it is. Is it a protein powder itself or a branch chain type product? Well, it's actually neither of those. Uh, it's uh, constituents and derivatives of the uh, main bioactive components that are found in proteins. And uh, basically they've been uh, fractioned out to uh, maximize uh, the protein synthesis capability. So it's not really a protein per se um, or a, you know, a branch chain. They're uh, bioactive peptides which in and of themselves are uh, amino combinations mm -hmm. but at that fine bioactive level. Yeah, do you have anything to add to that? No, I, I, think, I think David handled that well. Um, when, you, when, you, when you are creating a new category, as you know Mark, and these opportunities don't come often and it's exciting but it also takes a lot of education. So as we work through these questions, I think uh, this is all going to be new to a lot of people. And it took yeah. us a couple years to figure this out ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, these are great questions. And, and uh, you know, I think, David, I think you handled that one well. And I think we also need to preface this with there's still a lot of things we don't know about this product as well, which we're hoping through some of the research uh, that we've uh, initiated and so forth that we're going to find out a lot more about some of the benefits. And that's something I'd like to add. A lot of people talk about research and research and research. Again, the reason I did that initial video saying, I'm gonna take this, and I don't know anybody found anything bad because I didn't say anything good about the product. I'm like, look, the guys who are behind this, and I don't know whose names I can mention, whose names I can't, who's behind the scenes, who's in front of the scenes, but the bottom line is these are guys I used to literally take out to lunch and pay for it just to get that hour-long education, which is worth more than any university. These are pioneers in the sport nutrition industry who will tell you if something sucks. So when someone like the people behind this project gets behind something, I'm gonna try it. I mean, these guys actually live it. And what I'll say from a personal standpoint, um, coming off, con I started this a week out from my show. And I'll tell you what, um, you know, it's the really the only variable I changed of my supplement, right? My, I'm pretty simple guys. You know, I'm always like protein, creatine, branch chains. If a pill says it's gonna give you these magical muscle gains, Nothing works unless you do. There's no such thing. Absolutely. And I have noticed a difference. And I can't pinpoint, boom, but I can say that it's been a contributing factor. And for someone who's at an advanced level like me, to be able to say that might be working, that's something to be said, especially someone with a regimented program. No, I mean, typically, you know, an athlete that's highly trained like yourself, getting market noticeable results is usually very difficult. So whenever you can notice something, the effect it's having, 
you know, that's always a great thing. And, and, you know, right from the beginning, Mark, and I think that's a great point, is we never came out and said, and nor will we say, take this tonight, turn in the Incredible Hulk tomorrow. You know, that's just a marketing gimmick. That's a lie. That's not how we promote this product. It's something that you should use every day. It's something that should be in your gym bag, should be in your supplement arsenal, and you will notice effects over time, but it's certainly not an acute, take it today, feel it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I think that pretty much um, gets that. So speaking of take it today, take it tomorrow, MLG, ML Gelf says, does it matter when you take it? Is it better to have before or after your workout or just take it in morning and evening? I know the research is still in development, but when are the optimal times to take it based on label Rex? I'm going to let you go with that one first. Uh, it's, it's a great question because we're still learning that. Um, we have a couple studies that are coming out that are going to help us determine that as well, optimal timing. But we believe, and, and the way we stated it on the label was to have one serving, which is based on body weight, one scoop if you're under 200 pounds, two scoops if you're over, in the a.m., and another serving in the p.m., about six to eight hours later. Um, again, one scoop if you're under 200, two scoops if you're over 200 pounds. What, what we're starting to learn and what we believe right now is that the optimal timing of at least one serving should be at or during training time, at or around training time. So whether that's pre with your pre-workout, during with your intra-workout, maybe mixed with an amino drink, um, or at the very least consumed with your post-workout shake or post-workout meal. But one serving needs to be around your training period. The other serving, if you train at the night, your other serving should be in the morning. If you train in the morning, your other serving should be in the evening, but at least two servings a day. Then one other thing is if you are consuming protein, say, uh, you know, throughout the day in shakes or some form like that, adding a, a scoop or two at that point will probably maximize the, the protein, uh, you know, extraction of those, uh, of those powders as well. So, um, again, as uh, Stephen said, there's still, there's still a lot of unknowns, but definitely when, when protein is, is in the body and needs to be used for muscle protein synthesis, you want to have some bio grow in there. And, that, and that's exactly why... <coughs> The, the around the training time, whether it's during, before, post, is most important because one thing we do know is the body is under the most demand for protein synthesis during your training. After the first set, your body's undergoing and, and needs and is calling for protein synthesis, so that's where BioGrow is going to come in and, and play an important role. All right, well, that answers it for me. So next one is Reagan again. Obviously a big Ronald fan. Hey, Mark. Uh, yeah, this one works. Since getting my first tub of BioGrow, I haven't noticed any change. One week. Apart from quick recovery. That would be a change. change. Um, <laughs> exactly. I haven't noticed any change no, we, except we, I grew more general. Right, sorry. Sorry. You know, before you finish that question, Dave and I have had a lot of discussions about this. We, we believe recovery is probably one of the most underestimated, understated, important benefits. And just what that customer stated is I didn't see any noticeable changes, but yet my recovery improved. Recovery is a very, very important part of training and, and, right. and building your body. Yeah, nobody seems to be looking for recovery. They seem to look for that, you know, uh, whatever excitement before the workout or something like that. You don't realize that hidden thing that you're not feeling is all of a sudden there's just a little less muscle soreness. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm ready to go back and work out again. And, and that means your muscle protein synthesis is working maximally. And so that in itself is, like you said, I mean, that's, that's enormous. It. <laughs> that's, that's huge. That's enormous. Um, Let's let you finish the question. Then. Okay, so I'm going to move on. He has a couple other little comments. I'll move on. My question is, what is the difference between BioGrow and colostrum powder? The price is similar. And would there be a difference between actual bovine colostrum and BioGrow? Uh, let's break the question up into two parts. So from an, from an effect standpoint, what should you expect as a consumer? One thing we do know, and we have a lot of data coming in right now and a lot of feedback, um, anecdotally, empirical, uh, clinical, that's basically suggesting when it's used every day, when BioGrow is used every day, and you're taking an adequate protein and you're training intensely, uh, resistance training, you're going to see improved recovery within about the first week. And again, that's a market improvement. I mean, that's something you can look forward to. Within a couple of weeks, two, three, four weeks, you should see market improvements in your strength. Mm -hmm. And again, depending upon diet and training. And then over time, we know that you can get respectable lean body mass gains from making your body more efficient at utilizing protein and protein synthesis. But again, it's not a take it today, turn it in the hook tomorrow, it's over time, continued use 
uh, and respectable gains in lean body mass. You know, a lot of guys are looking for, you know, 10, 15 pounds of lean body mass, but hey, if you can gain, you know, a good two, three, four, five pounds of lean body mass, that's, that's respectable. And that's growth huge. is never linear. You don't just right. keep getting stronger and keep growing muscle. Um, you have to keep working through those plateaus and that's where BioGrow is going to come into play over continued use of time. And the reason why it's really different from standard colostrums is uh, one, standard colostrums are taken more than 48 to 96 hours after birth. Our colostrum is taken at a much sooner point than the first 24 hours. Yeah. So we start with a much purer form, but we've also just fractioned out the good stuff. Yeah. The good stuff for muscle protein synthesis. So what you have is uh, a very atypical yeah. colostrum uh, and that's why it's really not even a colostrum uh, at that point because uh, all the constituents have been extracted out of it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, the first three days after my wife had her last child, I was making all kinds of gains. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me add to that. <laughs> There's a reason, but, 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 but that's, no, that's a good point, though. Back up on the colostrum. When you look at colostrum and, and neonate feedings and, and initial birthings and the first feedings are the most important, the most yes. important. Uh, for, for a number of reasons, not just immune, a lot of people associate colostrum to immune, but the growth factors, they start yeah. the cellular development of the, of the neonate. So when we look at colostrum, I, I hate to compare this to colostrum, although that's where it comes from originally, because that's like comparing gasoline to crude oil. One yeah. comes from the other, but they are not the same. There's a refinement process. So while we start from colostrum, you know, we cleave it, refractionate it, uh, it goes through centrifugation, uh, it goes through a high concentration, we manipulate the amounts of the growth factors and, and yes. proline rich peptides and immunoglobulins, and then we specifically uh, create a ratio that enhances protein synthesis. So while it comes from colostrum, it is not just colostrum. It is, it is through a very sophisticated process and uh, very important bioactive peptides in a specific ratio to enhance protein synthesis. And a big part of our issue is because it is a new category and the way uh, the constituents have come about, uh, there wasn't really any way for us to label it without having to use uh, colostrum somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, because you know, we had to identify it, its source. And so I think people just automatically say, ah, it's just colostrum. And it, it's really not. It's yeah. just derived from it. Yeah. Well, um, here we go. From Gnarly0531. Mark, if you come to Colorado, let us know. I want to come up and say what's up. Woo! As for a quick question, is there any dosage timing required with BioGrow? As in, I feel like if I take it when I wake up, then I go lift, I might just burn it off for energy. Or am I just crazy? And can I take it whenever, as long as it's twice a day? This is another refining timing thing. Yeah, one, it's uh, it's not going to burn like a fuel. Uh, so taking it is not going to it's not going to burn. It uh, once it's consumed, it'll sit into the blood, uh, get into the blood system, and uh, float around and be ready for protein synthesis. Uh, but timing is still always an issue. If your body's not ready for protein synthesis, I don't care what you have in there; it's not being used. Uh, we don't know fully what you know how long. Um, the BioGrow will sit in uh, the bloodstream, but then again, we don't really entirely know how long amino acids will sit there and hang out and wait for yeah. protein synthesis to occur. So there is still some questions, but again, I think we address the, the overall timing, uh, definitely around a workout, and then uh, you know, morning or evening shot is probably a, a good deal. Mm -hmm. Can you replace BCAAs with this for pre inter workout? Can it replace BCAA? Well, uh, I don't, you know, the question always is replacement. Uh, I don't think you want to replace anything per se because it depends on so many other factors yeah. in your diet. Um, well, and two, Dave, for, for, for BioGrow to work efficiently, you need amino acids, acids. present. Um, right. You know, if you look at the base of how BioGrow was constructed on the philosophy of, you know, you, we understand protein synthesis, we understand the muscle cell, we understand it has a, when it, when it has a stimuli like weight training, it calls for protein synthesis, it needs aminos. So what BioGrow does is essentially puts a, a louder beacon on that call, yep. the signaling effect is stronger, and it accelerates the rate of protein synthesis. So we need those aminos present. So you don't want to technically replace anything. You want to make sure the food and the protein and the aminos are present to make BioGrill work. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, the food. Uh, you know, it's your overall protein consumption that, that, that you know, you're pulling out those essential aminos. and Nothing replaces chains, so. macronutrients, but I always they, tell they people, don't. you can't take a free-form amino and replace a bonded protein with it. You just can't do it. And that's kind of what I said on another product review that 
their, their position is that it replaces it. I'm like, it's a good product, but it doesn't replace. You can't replace a macronutrient. You can't just up and, okay, I don't need this anymore. I think there's a place for food. Oh, Call absolutely. me crazy. Yeah, I think people have to realize, I mean, for us to really be able to determine could you replace any single thing with anything else, you'd have to have really extensive studies to be able to really determine that because everybody's digestion process, you know, is, is different. So Well, we uh, like to eat and we like to drink exactly. shakes and it feels uh, yeah, yeah, feel full. Yeah, exactly. I, I like to chew stuff once. I was exactly. like yesterday on the flight. Now, I, I'll tell you what, man. I, um, I do think there is a, a time when things can be replaced. For example, my wife could be replaced by Carrie Underwood in a heartbeat <laughs> and I would be just fine. So, <laughs> She ain't gonna watch let me, this. Let me let me add to the, the question. <laughs> so I think part of that confusion lies from we've made a, a statement that one small scoop of biogrill, which is one one hundred yes. grams, is the equivalent of uh, the bioactives found in twenty five grams of whey protein concentrate. Now, on an equivalent bioactive basis, that's true and that's a fact. But does that mean you should use biogrill to replace your protein? No. The, yeah. the only place where I would see that probably beneficial is if uh, probably a female who's, who's doing and undergoing a, a very strict diet and maybe looking at calorie maintenance, yeah. uh, calorie control, mm -hmm. and rather than consuming uh, a large protein shake or something, she might replace it with a smaller scoop or two of BioGrow and get the same bioactives and the, the direct impact on protein synthesis but without the calories, fat, or sugar. Mm -hmm. That might be one instance, but other than that, I would say it's in addition to and not in replacement of. Yeah. yeah. Plus some of the other protein, I mean, there is some filling components that fill you up when you, when you eat it. Satiation is one exactly. of the, like, whey protein and satiation. Yeah. Um, I remember people saying, well, I drink, I wouldn't drink chase today. Whey protein is actually proven to have a higher satiation value than food. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, you can, my thing is, is that, look, this is not something that you, you, you replace. It's not something you add on. It's, it's a whole new category of cool thing to make you get better results. And um, it's, it's, again, I'm pretty simple with my, with my supplement recommendations. They're, they're simple. And I've been known to get in trouble and have to delete videos for talking <laughs> trash. Um, <laughs> you guys don't even see what I say in private. So, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm as skeptical as anybody. So, yeah, and, and that's the reason why, Mark, we've, we've kind of labeled BioGrow as fertilizer for your muscles. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you layer it on there, but you still have to eat right. Yeah. You still have to train hard. And in fact, one of the things we're finding with BioGrow is the guys who are training harder are getting yeah. more out of it. Yes. Definitely. I'll tell you what, I, I switched from, I was doing, I was recovering so well, I went so high volume that I think my joints were going to fall off. It was just, recovery was there, but you know, you still have joints. Yep. Um, so now I'm going more, I had to switch up a little, but it does, I'm not going to say, the recovery is definitely markedly without any other real changes. And everybody, I mean, and the thing is, when you have a product like this, you get mixed feedback. I've yet to have one negative email, and I've probably had, probably, dozens of positive emails about BioGrow. And it's, 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 it's exciting because to find a new category in this industry, I mean, it'd be easier to replace my wife with Carrie Underwood. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's literally, it's almost because there's only so many things you could do. You have pre, during, post workout, you have protein, you have fat burners. And, and then you're like, what now? Well, that, that was part of the challenge. It's, uh, you know, where, where does this go? It doesn't go anywhere. It That's the beauty of it. And well, so then yeah. who's going to let us, you know, is everybody going to be okay with the whole category thing? Because really it is, it's its own it. category. And, and it, it's sort of changing some of the consumer's perception that you have to only have a pre-workout. Uh, you know, just getting that under, you know, that understood. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on and I'm going to actually um, generalize this question because ask if you can mix it with a certain product. But a lot of people think that when you combine two supplements, automatically like some compound goes off and it explodes and neither of them work, like caffeine and creatine or glutamine and creatine competing for receptors or some BS crap that someone wrote a while ago and whatever. I mean, it, creatine is going to get absorbed. It's really hard to mess up creatine. Mm -hmm. I mean, so this one's like BioGrow doesn't mix well with water, which it mixes all right. I mean, it mixes is Yeah, we, we do know that BioGrow is... is fairly hydrophobic, um, if mixed with plain water, unless it's highly agitated. In other okay. words, a strong shaker cup, uh, blender bottle, you know, the- uh, We sell these, by the way. The, uh, the blender, you know, but other than that, if you just try to spoon stir it with water, in fact, we say on the label not to do yeah, that. Don't do it. Uh, but mixing it with a shake, putting it in uh, oatmeal, it mixes well with warm water and, and soft foods, yogurt, cereal, uh, your shake, 
Um, a lot of guys are just putting a scoop in their mouth and chasing it in the yeah, water because it's, it's, it's only a gram and a half. It tastes all right, too. As far as negating uh, you know, the effects of one another, I don't think there, there's very few substances that negate one another. Because remember, each thing has its own receptors. Yes. And so you're not going to find this and this trying to fight for this single receptor. The receptors open up based on training. So if you're training really heavy, your receptors are going to open up and want more help from all the different things that you're taking in. And it is training specific, certainly if you're training for endurance versus strength or size, you're going to see a different uh, need by the body. But yeah, yeah there's, there's no real competition for uh, constituents. So whether you're mixing it with amino acids or creatine or another flavored beverage, I don't see anything that I'd say off limits as far as supplements are concerned that'll affect it, in no. my opinion. In fact, you know, Mark, this last weekend I was at the ISSN conference talking to Darren Willoughby about this and asked that specific question to him. Do you think that there would be any challenges with, um, you know, uptake, bioavailability, receptor, uh, with uh, competing with any aminos or anything else? And he said, absolutely not. There are some aminos that compete with one another. You know, for instance, beta alanine sometimes can get blunted by the effects of other aminos or, or even whey protein. But uh, there shouldn't be anything in BioGrow that would compete or, or be challenged by any other types of supplements in terms of its uptake. Yeah. But again, remember part of that competition also is in just your body's ability to absorb uh, different things at the time that it needs it and what the other, uh, you know, what's already free floating around the blood to begin with. And so. Yeah. Go ahead, combine it with whatever you think. The other great thing is there's no taste. Yeah. So, you know, stick it in with uh, with whatever you want. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, this is back to bio. Is there more micro fractions in bio grow than one to two scoops of whey protein concentrate? First of all, guys, scoops aren't standardized. They range from 20 to 60 to 100 grams. A I mean, scoop is, and it's an estimate, unless you're using a scale, it's going to be plus minus 20% on a whey protein scoop. Yeah. Um, so if you're really serious, get a scale because density varies. But um, basically, are there more micro fractions in there than whey concentrate? I, I think it's the equivalency thing, right? Yeah, it's the equi so it's 1.5 gram scoop of BioGrow is the equivalent bioactives found in 25 grams of whey protein concentrate. So, you know, and, and each type of protein has different types of bioactives. Um, you know, colostrum just happens to be naturally higher in certain ones. We extracted those basically cleaved everything else out and then concentrated and brought them to a higher level. And then one other important step we did with BioGrow is uh, we find it into a low molecular weight. So it actually goes through the gut intact, which has been one of the other questions we've had is, well, can this actually pass through? Well, yes, in a low molecular state, it's highly bioavailable. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, this one's about staying, about energy levels and staying awake. This comes from Roman A. I'm on week two of using BioGrow on a cut. So far, my strength is actually a bit higher and recovery is not bad either on a cut. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. He was able to hit Monday morning and even after his full body Sunday morning workout, he's also using Humapro and Aminolast. Last week with just BioGrow was pretty good at recovery. I wasn't expecting much, but I noticed I felt more awake during the night, which is his days because he works night. Not sure if it's because of being able to recover faster or not from using BioGrow, but it is new to me. I don't know if we have research that would confirm that BioGrow is giving you any extra energy. Where yeah. There's certainly no additive, so there's no stimulant or anything like that in it. Uh, without a doubt, if you're recovering better, you tend to get better sleep patterns. So if I took a little step aside and took a look at recovery data, when you talk to people and just do a, a standard uh, you know, dis, um, experiments on recovery, uh, if you're recovering faster, you tend to feel better and more awake. So there is that connection, but we can't honestly say, you know, BioGrow makes you stay awake or well, makes and, you... Well, and also from an anecdotal, <clears throat> one of the things from an anecdotal standpoint, Mark, we, we pay attention to like like you do, is you, you read a lot of the customer comments and the feedback, and, and sometimes you start to see patterns emerge, and one of the things that we've heard from consumers a lot is, is there anything in here that will make you sleep better at night? And, and the answer is no, not that we're aware of. But we're getting people telling us for some reason I'm getting better sleeping. And I'm not trying to promote that as a claim, and there is no science that would back that up. But when you hear that enough, you start to say, well, I don't know, is it part of the recovery process and you're able to sleep? I'm not sure, but I'm not promoting it as a sleep agent, but it's just one of the things we've heard from consumers. Yeah, it makes, so with that said, here's a perfect segue. Is it cool to take at night like Casey? This comes from Suppressor Baffled. I, love these I would say absolutely. I mean, it, it. You know, we know the body. You know, in terms of a state of of whether you actually go into a catabolic state or not. But you know, the body undergoes protein synthesis while you're sleeping. Adding biogrow to casein would certainly be uh, a great way to make sure you're making use of all that protein you consume, especially if you're consuming over 35, 40 grams at a you know 200 pound average size guy. 
Um, but, you know, think about when your other serving was. If you're training late at night and your serving was at or around training, then you probably don't need another one until maybe the next morning. So, you know, again, it comes down to timing, but taking it at night with the case and absolutely. Well, if we get a little piece of science, you've got the, uh, your highest level of muscle protein synthesis is during and immediately following your workout and then starts to drop off a little bit towards the three hour mark post-workout. But we know it still continues for as long as 24 to 48 hours post-workout. So certainly uh, helping that muscle protein synthesis later on mm -hmm. uh, is important. And uh, you know, even though you might begin the bio growing in the beginning and helping that muscle protein synthesis, it's still always occurring. You're always having protein turnover in the body. Uh, and the harder you train, the longer that process is going to take. So certainly it's not going to hurt. Okay, so, uh, you know, this guy, this is a hockey lover, 1085. I don't have a lot of money. Should I buy away or bio grow? Uh, there's a, that's another one of those good uh, good questions. Well, are you uh, buying the food? I wouldn't even consider yeah. whey yeah. a supplement. Whey yeah, is a food. I think the first thing you have to do is you have to look at whey proteins and proteins in general as food. That's a macronutrient, uh, whether you're getting it from chicken breast, egg whites, or whey protein. Um, that's your food. That's your base, your foundation. And then from there, you build on that. So the question is, you know, do I do a pre-workout before I get on the, the ice ring? I mean, hockey was my sport all my life. It's, you know, there couldn't be anything better than beta alanine for delaying muscle fatigue yeah. on the ice because it's mm -hmm. all type 2 fast switch, you know, fibers and, and um, short sprints. But, you know, I would say... You know, if you're trying to uh, preserve or gain lean body mass while you're in a training mode, then certainly both, you know, but you got to think of protein as, as more of food and BioGrow um, as fertilizer for that muscle if you're trying to gain lean body mass. Well, let's just assume for a moment, and that obviously we don't know who this is uh, and what their training is like. It's Hockey Lover 1085. It's Hockey Lover 1085. He obviously loves hockey. Well, yeah. It, are, you know, if you're weight training, are you just using hockey as your form of exercise? Uh, either way you look at it, the harder you train, the, the more valuable the bio grow becomes. And so it's not really a question of should I take this or this once again, it's how much do you value your training and what price can you put on that. Yeah. And most people, if I, you know, and, and I look into the camera and say to you hockey folks, uh, and I've worked with enough hockey, baseball, all those sports, uh, you know, there's a few other things you do on a day-by-day -day basis that if you chop that out, you could <laughs> get a more affordable supplement program. Yeah. Uh, to work for you. So I don't think it's, uh, you know, again, it's the, the, the substitute, but as Stephen pointed out, uh, you know, obviously your diet, uh, taking macronutrients versus, uh, you know, your supplements is a, is a difference for sure. Yeah. This is a multi-part question from Joe Turner. How can BioGrow be calorie-free? Hmm. Well, had that, this goes back to the old adage argument of amino acids yeah. not having calories. Uh, you know, how do you equate kcals and calories from macronutrients? And if you don't have specific macro, macronutrients, if we've cleaved out the fat, the sugar, um, the amino acids, we've essentially cleaved out all the caloric portions of protein. Right. And now you just have the bioactive constituents. So if we're going to start looking at measuring calories on micronutrients, then you've got to look at creatine and aminos and everything yeah. else. And now you get into a whole other argument which I think is a more of a scientific debate than anything, but I've never looked at things like micronutrients, bioactives, aminos, and said they contain calories. And I know you have a particular argument about this as well. Why? How do you count them? I mean, if it's a free form amino, it's not an abundant. I mean, is it? It doesn't obviously digest like a protein. It, I'm talking amino acids. Is it a carbohydrate? Is it a protein? Does it contain two calories, four calories? What's the energy requirements? What's and there's just too much. That's why I'm like, if you're consistent with it, and also the scoop's this big. If that's screwing up your diet, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, let's be real here. I mean, yeah. you're really worried about a scoop, a 1.5 gram scoop. Is your diet that meticulous that a 1.5 gram scoop of BioGrow is going to hurt your diet? I mean, let's be real here. It doesn't matter. But Joe, Joe also asks, how can it do the same thing as protein as far as muscle rebuilding yet contain no protein? It's the equivalent. Well, because it's the yeah, it's the bioactive component. If you take a look at a big, you know, a chunk of protein, um, you'll see it. You know, huge chains of these peptide uh, bonds and so forth. But there's only really small bioactive components of it. All the rest of that stuff is there is whatever you want to call it binder. It performs some other functions for the body, per perhaps. But that's the only little piece you need out of all this other stuff. And so what we're talking about is the bioactive components, and particularly for muscle protein synthesis. 
there's just you know that's what we're comparing up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll add to that just getting a little more scientific, and I know David's a science guy, um, but I looked at you know, and when we originated the idea behind BioGrow, it was really to take what's useful out of protein. We know aminos are useful, but aminos, you created that category. Thank you, and. But there's bioactive constituents in protein that are useful to the muscle. And when you look at how the muscle undergoes yeah. protein synthesis, you know, it's the bioactive peptides that really amplify that process of protein synthesis. So that's what's actually doing the work to help develop the muscle more efficiently. Yeah, and if I were to replace 100% of my protein intake a day for a 200 pound man with the equivalent of 200 grams of BioGrow, would my gains be the same as if I had 200 grams of protein from chicken? And as we answered before, it's not a replacement. I mean, I think that's the biggest misconception is because you guys stated the, the equivalency. Yeah. And now people think it's or it's not a replacement. It's no, its I mean, even, even if you put in a whole ton, you know, especially 200 grams, but if you even if you put in a whole ton, all those bioactive components aren't going to be utilized. There's only a finite amount of uh, protein synthesis that can happen at any one time or even over a period of time where the, where anything would stay alive long enough in the, you know, in the body. So. Uh, you couldn't just, you know, if you did that, you're gonna, you're not necessarily going to improve any more protein synthesis. And there's there's another way to look at at BioGrow when you think about its use usefulness in the body. And you know, you see a lot of guys, and I just walking through Walmart the other day, saw a protein powder on the on the shelf that said 60 grams of protein per serving. And, and okay, if I'm a 175 pound guy and I'm trying to gain muscle and that looks attractive to me, question is, is my body really going to use all of that? Yeah. And there was a big debate, round table debate at ISSN this weekend about how much protein can be bioavailable and used by the body. And, you know, the consensus was somewhere 12, 15 grams per hour, depending on a number of variables, body weight, um, you know, stress levels, amount of sleep. I mean, there's so many variables, you couldn't measure them all. And um, if, if you are consuming that much protein, then chances are your body's probably not using it all. It might be absorbing it, but it might not be using it all. And that's where BioGrow can help you use that protein. And then the other part of BioGrow is maybe you are on a bit of a budget and maybe you want to take one scoop of protein and one scoop of BioGrow to get the bioactives, but without the calories, fat, and sugar, but give your body the ability to process a larger amount of the bioactives that are in protein. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple different ways you can look at it and really make your supplement program more affordable. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we have a new page right here. Um, another replace protein. Can I spread BioGrow throughout the day? Instead of two scoops in the morning and two at night, can I put one scoop four times a day in my meals? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think probably the more you spread it, the, the more beneficial it would likely be because you're hitting all those points of yeah. uh, protein synthesis you know, throughout the day plus all the other uh, constituents that are necessary for protein synthesis, so you probably do a better job. Again, the question uh, becomes down for people is, is how much can you, you know, afford to, uh, you know, in your supplement program, as Stephen mentioned, to be, to be taking. Uh, if you, we always say this in training, if you have only a finite uh, you know, budget and a known time, that's your, that's your workout. And so definitely consuming around the workout is, uh, is, is you know, an important time. Okay. Yeah, and, that, and, and you know, out of full disclosure, that's still something we're trying to learn and we're going to learn in our studies that are coming in and is how long does BioGrow hang around in the body, you know, how long is it present in the blood. And, and so as we learn more about that, we'll probably be adjusting if it's any different yeah. than we would recommend. And now we'll be adjusting how people, suggesting how people use and it. And we did the same thing with branch chains as it went on as research. You learn more. As, as yeah. the, the other piece is whatever you try you need to try it more than once. Yes. So, you know, you're not gonna see a change, as Stephen, I think, said way back, uh, you know, you're not gonna see a change overnight. So whatever uh, regimen you wanna use, you need to do it at least three or four days in a row, yeah. uh, or three or four training sessions in a row, or whatever it happens to be, uh, so that you can really compare up effectively for how your body processes it. Yeah, um, how does this speed up protein, the synthesis, how does this speed up the synthesis? What makes it do that? I guess how does it speed up? Why does it speed up protein synthesis? This comes from cash out gameplay. Well, uh, the constituents uh, and you know the main constituents, the proline rich peptides, the growth factors uh, being the IGF one in particular, um, they have uh, the ability. The pro the proline rich peptides are the, the signaling mechanism, right? Tells the cell, tells the body, I need some help. I need to the protein synthesis to start really uh, occurring. 
The IGF-1 pathway is a much more direct pathway to muscle protein synthesis than any of the other pathways that exist. And so what happens is, is because it's able to stay intact, get to the muscle cell that's yeah. calling out for the action, it bypasses a lot of the other functions that would have to take all these steps to get to the muscle protein synthesis. So that's the main mechanism. But again, there's still a lot of unknowns of protein synthesis at that, at that you know, deep cellular level. You know, where do yeah. cer certain pathways uh, you know, fire in? You can't even still find research that uh, agrees on wh when the mTOR pathway kicks in, you know, yeah. AKT path, uh, you know, and so forth. So you've got a lot of unknowns there, but we yeah. know this, that the IGF-1 is a direct stimulator of muscle protein synthesis. Yeah. Yeah, and the IGF-1 thing, um, drug tests, IGF-1, we get that a lot. I'm just making that one up as we go. Okay, well, we're... One no, it's a question we get a lot, you know, because there, there's a lot of athletes out there uh, that are tested in organizations, and, um, you know, we have, been, we have every batch tested by... Um, Informed choice. choice. Yep. Uh, to ensure there's no banned substances, there's no fillers, there's no binders, there's no... There's not even any excipients in here. You know, that's kind of an inside technical work on industry, but there's no flow agents. There's there's nothing else in here except the constituents of the bioactive peptides. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, because you see IGF-1 on the label, one of the questions is, well, am I going to test positive for IGF-1? Now, you have to look at it from a standpoint of, well, what does the organization test for, and what are the levels of a healthy, normal male? Yeah. Now, if you're taking a synthetic form of IGF, well, your levels like anabolic steroids are going to be off the charts. Yes. You know, testosterone is going to go off the charts just like IGF would go off the charts. We're talking about putting yourself still within health, healthy, normal ranges, but um, not so much so that if you were tested, you would be you would test positive for IGF one levels raised out of normal ranges in terms of the the ability to you know create. Um, you know, to be banned or whatever from your athletic organization. Yeah, I mean, we can't guarantee someone wouldn't test positive. I mean, heck, there are people with just naturally high testosterone levels that, that test yeah. positive without taking anything. Uh, so that's one issue, too. I mean, yeah, I mean, who knows? If you took the whole container, uh, maybe you would test positive for IGF-1. But in our, within our dosage size, uh, it would be uh, very unlikely that you would test positive. Okay. Stephen said we, we not only do we make sure that the product is clean, uh, from the beginning manufacturing processes, but after it's con you know, put in the container, we have it tested again to ensure that nobody's uh, you know, tampered with any of the ingredients going in. Good. So have you done any, or are you doing any human double-blind studies? Asks Paintball Gremlin. Paintball Gremlin, we are. We have initiated uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of different studies. It's a little too early to leak out uh, exactly what we're doing, uh, but we are doing studies with trained athletes uh, which we feel is very important yes, uh, yes. Be because that's who's you know who's using it. Uh, on that note, it is always difficult to get really good athletes uh, to you know submit to, to, to testing. This yeah, should but, be but, pretty unique. But they, and, and, and Mark, you know this. And one of the dirty little secrets in our industry is a lot of times if you look real closely at clinical studies, they're done either on obese or women. untrained people, mm -hmm. and specifically women. And you're going to see a noticeable result just by getting in the gym or eating differently. Even if they measured their Twinkies out there. <laughs> Let alone using a supplement. So yeah. we're talking about, we're at a very prestigious university. We're using well-trained athletes that when they see a market increase in their performance or lean body mass or recovery, you know, you're talking about that can translate to the average guy very easily as Absolutely. well as a well-trained athlete. And these are not your mama's researchers. These are, <laughs> no, these are the best in the yes. business that are, that are taking care of this for us. So I, we're we're I also looking that. at a number of things, including timing. We're looking at even, we've, we've got a, a couple other study groups that are looking at uh, things that we could possibly be adding to BioGrow that would even make it work more efficiently in the body. Uh, so we're, we're trying to think as far ahead as possible in terms of making the most and best use awesome. of BioGrow. Um, we already answered this north size. So is it protein? If so, how many grams in one serving? It's the equivalency of the bioactives of 24. Okay, we'll just move on from that one. Shaquan Douglas says, would this be good for vegans? For vegans? Yeah. yeah. It depends on your definition of, uh, of vegans. If you're, yeah. if you're uh, not just concerned about where the source is, yeah. then <laughs> certainly. But if you're, you're, you have a source issue uh, being sourced from you know, bovine colostrum, uh, then that becomes a problem itself. But I can tell you this much, if you're vegan, you, getting BioGrow in is going to help uh, with muscle I, I, protein I'll synthesis. I'll tell you from first-hand experience, you know, my, my, my brother and his, his girlfriend are both vegetarians, and I, I don't know if technically what level of vegan they are, but 
they they love using BioBro just because they know it gives them the, the, the bioactive equivalents of, and um, and I think they can use it, but again, it depends on what type of vegan they are. Well, yeah. if you look at some of the research between soy, whey proteins, and things like that, uh, still, you know, the, 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 the bovine source proteins uh, and, you know, the whey side of things are, are far better still for performance. Uh, yeah. And so if you are more of that soy protein uh, consumer, then certainly you're going to get the benefits of that muscle protein synthesis. So it's a definite add. Well, there you go. So um, I think we answered this from Drop the Brick on Your Toes. Hmm. Is that really his name? Yeah, Drop the Brick on Your Toes. Can you even make names that one? I just don't get the premise of it. Does it make the protein you're ready and just more efficient? Shit's just confusing for me. I just like shit plain and simple. Just like he was. Yeah, I mean, simple. I'm not too smart. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it pretty much yes. I mean, it makes the protein you take more efficient. Also, has its own protein. active. Well, again, it goes back to you know how much protein are you consuming? How hard are you training? You know, if you're if you're the typical consumer who might be thinking that taking 60, 80 grams at a sitting of protein is is working for you, there's a good chance that about half of that is probably not. Right. So, BioGrow can help make that protein more efficiently, you know, use, utilize it more efficiently in the body for protein synthesis. And as well, um, you know, in terms of recovery and strength and the, and the other benefits of, of the bioactive peptides, you're going to see those over time. So uh, again, not a replacement for protein, but if you want to make your body uh, more able to use all the protein that you're consuming, uh, from the intense training, then definitely BioBro is going to help. Yeah, and I still always say, you know, take a look in the mirror and ask yourself how hard you're really training. Because there is nothing, I mean, you know, whether you're an anabolic user isn't, uh, you know, just going to take the stuff and hope it makes the muscles no, grow. No. I mean, uh, you know, we all know how hard work is important. Yes. And that's, that's, you know, a question we always ask. Yeah. And um, I'm actually going to start this one out. Just a legal disclaimer. Joe10081 says, can somebody under age of 18 take this? Consult with your parents and family physician before using any supplement or partaking any diet or training program. Agreed. Um, is there anything in here inherently bad for young children? I wouldn't say there is, but again, I can't. I'm not going to recommend supplements on my channel to anybody who's a minor. Well, yeah, I'm not, we don't we don't advertise or promote yeah. supplements to anyone under the age of 18. Normally, you know, I talk to a lot of high school kids playing football and sports, and I just tell them, you know, eat lots of peanut butter jelly sandwiches, <laughs> drink lots of chocolate milk, and train your ass off in the gym. Yeah. You know? um, and you know, whey protein, a multivitamin. You know, if you're having a hard time getting protein in. But you know, it's it's not something that I would advertise to them. But I will tell you, you know, I make shakes every day at my house. Um, all my kids drink it. Um, yeah. Hell, my cats eat it out of the cup. Yeah, your time. cats do. I got it. one muscular cat who eats biogro and one that's not. muscular <laughs> hairless cat. That's awesome. Um, yeah, my four and a half year old gets a gets a shake. But again, yeah, we're not promoting. No, to, no, we're just yeah. bad parents. But, um, but it's exactly. not. It, it, it wouldn't be unsafe. No, for it's, any it's of not teams. unsafe. Yeah, but again. Talk to your parents. No. Um, and saying that it's a free-form protein type of product, isn't it just a BCA? No, it's not a BCAA. No, we never completely said different. Free-form no. protein per se. No. It's the bioactive constituents that uh, that are made from uh, the peptides themselves. <laughs> this has to be a trolling comment, but hey, what the hell? We like those. Ofec Raphael says, "Can I inject this?" Well, due to the clumpiness, and that would be hurt. <laughs> that would just be. I'm not exactly certain how you would do that. I don't. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll leave that one uh, for yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> don't inject it. Um, there's another one. Is this just a BCA product? I think we've gone over that. Okay, um, Gerard Gerardo Pela Fox eight made a comment, but I think it's cool to address this. I've replaced half my protein intake with BioGrow. I'm cutting. It's been about a week and a half. I'm still losing weight, and the weights are going up like butter. So far, this is the shit, implying that it does replace protein. Well, I, I, and I think that's that point, Mark, is if you're, I, I think, and I believe, and, and the way we've cut and really tried to simplify this, is if you're trying to bulk up or add lean body mass, it's in addition to protein. If you're trying to cut weight and you're really managing your macros and your calories, then it might be in a replacement of a certain amount of protein. I don't, I don't think I'd ever advocate replacing all your protein, but I think what he's done, I, that'll work. You know, you'll manage calories, no calories, mm -hmm. fat or sugar. You could reduce your, your total protein intake in half. 
substitute the rest with, with BioGrow and you're still going to see good recovery strength gain. And as you know, when you're cutting, it's hard to maintain your strength and your muscle mass. And that's when your calories get really low too. Let's say you have nothing to cut from, carbs are low, this and that, and all you got is protein left and you're like, well, let me see what this does. Right. Some people have to get, I mean, the lighter guys, they have to cut their calories pretty low. So I'm not advocating it, but I'm saying theoretically. What did he say? His strength was going up like butter? butter? Like butter. I, I don't understand yeah. that. <laughs> no, no, um, but it's it's a hell of a, it, uh, no offense. Um, no that's offense a, it's a great comment. His strength yeah. is going up while he's cutting and using BioGrow. I mean, that's, it's that's a, a phenomenal a comment, a horrible metaphor slash no. similar. Yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. You know, we don't, we're not paying for this, obviously. Uh, you know, I think it's a, a fact's a fact, anecdotal or not, assuming that everything else was controlled uh, within himself, um, it's happening. I mean, and we always say this in, in science, uh, the real true scientists will tell you there's that X factor. So I don't, I can't prove it in science, I just kind of know it, I feel it, or whatever. And if you're controlling every other variable and you just change one or two things, you know, fact's a fact, it works for you that way. Mike Dunphy, would this help? Would this be helpful during a bulk? Absolutely. Absolutely. I you can't know, see why yeah, not. Yeah, you're, you're making more use of the protein from the calories you're consuming. Uh, you know, again, if you're doing a high dose of protein, is your body using it all? Maybe not. So BioGrow is going to help make use of all that protein. Yeah. So certainly, from a bulking standpoint, absolutely. Okay. Um, and let's see. I think that one almost took us by surprise. It's kind of oh, like, oh, this, yeah. this is my <laughs> favorite so far from the Nubident. Nubident. I'm really interested in this product, but there's one thing I have to know for work-related purposes if it changes the taste of my semen. Hmm. Do we have anecdote, empirical evidence of this one? Can I sign up to be a part of that study? I don't know. Do you, do you eat asparagus? <laughs> I don't know. Is that part of the control group? These I, I, don't, I don't know. If this, this might have to get edited out. I don't know. But no, I, I, oh, no. We, this, this is the whole video right here. This is... Uh, you know what? You know what? I've had I've had clients. Oh like, God! No, 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 no. We're not even going to answer this one. No, no we got to we're, we're, we're just going to move on. I just had to. No. I just had to read it. Okay, this one's for me. Um, Rich Tree and uh, Rich Tree MJ. How long have you been on BioGrow HumaPro? Um, I still use HumaPro between meals that I've stated in a, in a video before. I don't think anything replaces a macronutrient, so to speak, um, gram for gram. Um, have you replaced the protein calories you would have been you would have had using food or whey. Um, I did for a little bit and I found that um, I added in carbohydrate. My body took on a different feel. Carbohydrate obviously retain more water. It's different metabolic. That's why I, I always say macronutrients, nothing where you can't take out protein, add in an amino acid and then add in carbs to replace the protein. It's much more than that. There's this thermic it's effect. Complex, yeah. It's more complex. Um, Let's see, uh, that one doesn't need answered. Um, that's not about you. If BioGrow is amplifying protein synthesis, still need all of that whey, food, etc. cetera. Uh, again, like if you're dieting and constricted calories, it might work as a replacement. This is all me talking. Um, but the main benefit is that it acts on its own as such a, a beneficial agent. Yeah. It also yeah. helps your other stuff work better. Yeah, as long as you're training hard, and you're creating that stimuli where the muscle is trying to call for protein. You need the aminos you present. Gotcha. You yeah. need you need yep. that protein present. But again, um, we can amplify that process, that call for protein, and that acceleration of, of protein wow, synthesis. So absolutely, you still want those aminos present in the blood. You got it. And is this a custom engineer proprietary blend? What is it? Are you do you have the actual actives listed out? I'll let you disclose that. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, you know our industry has went through. Oh God! Yeah. Proprietary blends, and then let's have full disclosure because of micro concentration and all these things. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily call this a proprietary blend. It's more about the engineering process that went behind taking the constituents, the bioactives, out of the protein, and then the the process that they go through in terms of centrifugation, the the the, the filtration, the the concentrated level, and then basically manipulating the amounts of these growth factors, immunoglobulins, choline, rich peptides, in, in such a ratio that makes them beneficial for amplifying protein synthesis. Now, all that technical stuff aside, um, it is 1.5 grams of all of those particular bioactive peptides. Now, 
if we were to fully disclose those, then essentially you have our recipe for, for making this product. Now, we have uh, a patent pending on this um, as far as all the claims. Uh, the manufacturer that we work with uh, has a method of manufacture. So I think once we get everything pretty much buttoned up, then we would uh, be more apt to share what some of those ratios are. But right now, I think that's more about um, us protecting our intellectual property, and we yeah. worked really hard to design this, and we don't need anybody knocking this off. Oh yeah, out of the game. I'm, I'm against prop blends, but I'm talking about like uh, an amino acid blend. If it's two to one to one or four to one to one, like I, I want to know how much leucine I solution. Yeah, have. exactly. But this yeah. is something that's you're you're looking at ratios of bio fractions of big words and stuff, and that's something that somebody can easily go and reverse engineer your process. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You're right, Mark. A typical, you know, proprietary blend, if you will, is oftentimes used, not all the time, to mask the fact that they didn't use a clinical dosage of an ingredient. They're called fairy dusting, right? Inside the industry. And, and, and in this case, there's nothing here. Uh, it's not an underdosing of any individual bioactive no, peptide. Definitely it, it, not. Is a, it is, it is uh, the, the full amount needed on an equivalent basis to, to amplify the yes. protein synthesis. So there's, not, there's nothing being hidden here, in other words, and there's no underdosing, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, this is another one. Do you have any here? This comes from Sam JG101. And the first one we've already answered. Is this a brand new product and most companies will be releasing? Just answered that. Do you have any transformations or people that took this and had results? Well, you know, we're there's certainly no before and after pictures on this product. Uh, that's that's not really how we're marketing this product. That's not how we're promoting this product. Um, we have plenty of I would say individuals and institutions we've worked with, uh, Sports Science Center in New York, uh, with Jude and all of his athletes. Um, you know, uh, we had over 400 beta testers originally of this product, all well-trained athletes, um, all across the United States, submitting their feedback in very comprehensive feedback forms, uh, pilot studies, uh, internal and external. So while we don't have, you know, the, the classic picture of the guy who gained 25 pounds in lean mass. No evolution we, we have all the data yeah, that has right. come in in terms of, you know, knowing when and how much you can expect in terms of recovery and strength and lean body mass gains. And, and since this is a, uh, you know, a protein synthesis amplifier, we wanted to use folks, as Stephen said, that were already well trained. So our test groups when we were, you know, developing this were all really, you know, trained people because that's the, that, that's the best feedback we can get is if, if someone who's doing something over a period of time sees a, a change and you know how much you know how important that is just a yeah. couple percent an extra set or a few extra reps is all the difference in the world and we wanted to see that difference not again what you know could we take somebody from this level to this level with the product so yeah um, I'm sure we'll see a lot of transformations coming about anyways because uh, you know we do hear people saying that they're getting leaner they're they're you know more muscular and so forth their body is changing but primarily again it was looking at the muscle protein uh, synthesis okay Frank Oliveri, the classic cycling question. Do you take it seven days a week or do you take one or two days off from it? I don't think there's cycling needed. And again, these are things we're going to learn from a clinical study, but this is a continuous use. It's like if you think of protein and aminos, you just continue to use them regardless of the days you train or don't train. Uh, it's not an eight-week on, four weeks off. It's not a pro-hormone. It's a continued use. You want it in your body all the time, as long as you're training intensely. You know, if you're taking a break from training, yeah, maybe you don't need it. Um, just like you would probably lower the level of all your supplements used. Yeah. Fit Ange asks, is it safe for women to take? And if so, what's the dosage? Absolutely. And the dosage is uh, pretty much the same. I mean, again, our advocate, again, the way we uh, dose the product is uh, under 200 pounds, a single scoop per, per serving uh, or per, per use. Um, so if you're under 200 pounds, probably a single uh, scoop. Um, yeah, we haven't had any issues with any females taking it. We know, uh, you know, several who do. Yeah. We, have, we have quite a few females yeah. who are part of the beta test groups. Um, we have a number of personal trainers with a lot of clients themselves, female specific, who are using it, um, yeah. enjoying the results that they're seeing from it. Um, and again, you know, it's not, you know, it's agnostic to whether you're male or female. Yeah. Um, and um, definitely, women can use well, it. And you hit the nail on the head back with uh, the calorie thing. Uh, you know, women seem to prefer it a lot because the, you know. Yeah, no calories, no, no, calories. no sugar, no fat. They, yeah. Now, if we can make it bonbon flavored, yeah. that'd be fantastic. And it doesn't seem to hold Dave's water working on with that. it. We're working on flavors. That's, that's good. Um, bonbon. 
What is Bon Bon flavor exactly? Uh, well, they're delicious ice cream snacks with a hard shell. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Mike Granato asks, say I could gain 10 pounds of muscle over the next year with just your average stack, type diet and hard work. How much of what kind of gains could I expect, in your opinion, by taking this for the next year on top? 10 pounds of muscle in a year, that's a hell of a year, dude. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say if you even look at some of the most respectable studies around um, just even colostrum in general, um, you're looking at eight weeks and probably two to three kilos, you know, four or five pounds of good respectable, and that's... That's with a hard training regimen, um, active use of, of supplementation, um, and under in a controlled environment in the university. I think um, I think Kirk's study showed that, and there's a number of other studies that have showed what I would call respectable lean body mass gains. So, you know, until we get all of our data back on our study, I wouldn't I wouldn't sit here and suggest that anyone is going to contain uh, you know maintain or or develop that much more muscle than they would on their own. But 10 pounds, like you said, on your own. I mean, crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. sometimes I think people forget um, real lean body mass gains. Um, you take to just take good solid red meat. Take ten pounds of red meat, put it on the table, and figure out where where you want to slap the, that yeah. on your body. That's a lot of body weight, you know, it's in terms a lot of lean body mass. Well, again, where you start from, you know, where you are in, uh, you know, in your training and so forth. Someone like yourself, who's been training, you know, for years, putting on, you know, ten pounds now. Is a whole lot different than what it was it's back when hard kind for of like started. Heath and those guys. Exactly. Come on. There's sure. a reason they're the same weight at the Olympia every year. Yeah. yeah. Once you hit that, there's nothing you can take, nothing you can do once you get to that certain level. But I'm I'm guesstimating that a number of you aren't at Phil Heath's level. Yeah. Just and just just a random guess. Well, we're starting to get people that are saying, you know, hey, I'm starting to plateau a little bit, and it's like, well, okay, let, let's define what that is. Well, I'm still not getting sore. I'm still not getting the you know those issues. I'm just not seeing that muscle get any uh any bigger and it's you know part of that is 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 perception as well i mean you know if your arm is 19 inches adding another inch is you know is gigantic so i think what uh, what you're looking at is just that classic sort of plateau but what would happen if you dropped off you'd, you'd, you'd see yourself <clears throat> dropping back down yeah. so well one of the other things too one we know growth is not always linear we no. wish it was but yeah or else we'd be benching a thousand pounds right now yeah and the other thing is um, and again anecdotally what we found is there's been um, a lot of data coming back from groups where we've tested different dosage ranges and we're actually seeing more is better um, we do know from some individuals who have um, admitted to using um, certain anabolic steroids and using this product seems to amplify the results of that and they seem to be getting better results. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do know and we have seen with certain groups of individuals that there does appear to be a more is better in terms of the efficacy of the product. So where where is the diminishing re return? We don't know yet. We will find out, but it does look like there is a, a bit of a more is better here in terms of effects. There you go. Um, let's see. What are the benefits and disadvantages, and how can you determine if this supplement is right for you? It comes from the Ass Man of 916. Uh, well, the benefits, I think, we've clearly outlined. Yes, uh, the benefits are there. So, I, so I, I don't know. I can't really find any, uh, you know, bad things, if you will, or cons. Um, if it's right for you, I think if it fits yeah. in your budget is what it comes down to after getting the staples in and buying your food. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely, in my opinion... In, in the additives, you know, you take out, there's certain things that I think you need, fish oil and whey, which I actually put on my food bill, because to my, they're just, they're going to stay there no matter what. This is right up there in the top three to four. So, I mean, once you set your, your allocation of what you're going to spend money on, I think that's the main way to determine. If you can afford it in your budget, I think it's worth a try. Well, the other thing too, Mark, that, and I'm the eternal optimist, always have been. I normally don't focus on the negative, but I will tell you, because we've been very active in the boards and the forums, and and with your site and, and we, I listen to and I read the customer comments and things coming in and what are, what are they saying about the product. And I will tell you the thing that agitates me and gets to me the most is when guys knock the product and talk very negatively about it, but yet they haven't tried it. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Yep. Lay down 40 bucks and see if it works for you. If it yep. doesn't, worst you lost, You've lost more money on other things, right? We have a return but, policy, too. Yeah, and, and worst we, case, we, call us. <laughs> not I only mean, do you have a return policy, we will honor that back to you. We're, we're not afraid to put a money-back guarantee behind the product, but we know all supplements don't work for all people. But I will tell you, don't knock it unless right. you've tried it. Yeah, there is a, we were just talking about a product this morning that's, that's quite laughable that I, I bashed, 
and they sent me one to try and I tried it and it still sucks but I tried it I mean I, that's what I said I, I was that guy I was I was like look well great another product claiming to do something so I'm like well I'll try it and the only difference is I told people like there's a lot of stuff I try that I don't just don't say anything about mm -hmm. but for some reason I mean I tried to almost pretend I wasn't taking this because it was like I want to be as unbiased as possible but it was coming off a show uh, there, there's just a newborn in the house, so my opinion was if I could just get by right. and not not pass away or break something, I'd be in a good spot. But to actually see benefits from my last phase this time to this time to to this actual well, and that was one of the things with us. I think you know when we first started trying it and using it, uh, you know, you always have that biased opinion as the 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 group making this thing and. Uh, um, you know, so I think we're our biggest, you know, we scrutinize it more than anyone because the second we start feeling anything, it's like, wait a second, I mean, it's because I work here. Well. You know, and I'm getting this feeling that, that, that I shouldn't get. So we, uh, we specifically try to isolate and really figure out exactly what it is. Um, it just seems, you know, it, it's doing it. And I, I will say one other thing to the, to the comment on the question was I just presented at uh, ISSN this, this, this past week talking about more is better. Um, and in most cases with most products, uh, there's not a lot of, you know, downside. The, the question really is, is what the upside is financially, uh, you know, against the financial impact. But so the point of financially diminishing returns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. More is, more is not going to be dangerous in most cases for a lot but of stuff. What do the gains now. go from here to here, you know? Because yeah. I want this, but this might not be worth an extra 50 bucks. It's just, it's hard to determine that. Yep. Yeah, and it's again, it's it's experimenting on yourself. So everything's good. This comes from Zekin HD. Can you take BioGrow while fasting or dieting? I'm going to chime in and say, please see a psychologist if you're fasting. fasting. <laughs> Unless it's for religious purposes, then I hereby fully respect your beliefs. No, no, seriously. Let's say someone's intermittent fasting. We're going to just put apart all of our opinions on intermittent fasting. And say that okay, they're intermittent fasting. Would this benefit them, or is that even fasting if they're throwing in a uh, this? I don't know. What's the definition of fasting? I've heard people take branch chains during fasting. If you're providing substrate, are you really fasting? Yeah, I, I'm not going to touch that. I will say this: I'd be interested in seeing this, yes. the, the research behind because we know with fasting in general that you do start to tear apart, you know, utilize your muscle, uh, you know, the proteins in your muscle for energy. And so I'm, I'm wondering highly if, you know, taking bio while you're fasting would either prevent it or recycle that protein back up or not. Now, I can't go out and say well, that then the, the question is, are you really fasting? Then, yes. Yeah, having yeah. aminos and bio to sort of preserve the muscle, are yeah. you really fasting? May I present a theory? To present. prevent muscle breakdown while fasting, why not eat? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> no, no, we're going to get hated on by fast. No, we, look, we love all forms of diet as long as it yeah. helps you reach your goals. Okay? I'm just a bro. I'm old school every three hours or else I'm going to kill somebody because I'm hungry. Okay? Um, I really personally, I feel any kind of amino acid intake during a fast is going to be good because it's substrate at the end of the day. I mean, and bio grow would definitely be something I'd put in if you're... It's kind of like the differences in vegetarians. Like, I don't know if vegetarians, like, what should I do? I'm like, can you drink whey? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not really vegetarian. But yeah, I mean, go ahead. So if you're one of those quasi-fasters who drinks branch chains, but if you're a hardcore faster and you're just drinking water, no, this, this probably wouldn't work because then you're not fasting anymore. Right. It's, you know what yeah. I mean? I think from a restricted calorie diet, uh, then you're going to see some great gains or maintenance or whatever it happens to be. So yes, but, for dieting, yes. Fasting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, you can, and you can take it during your... Now, now, a lot of fat, I don't know if you guys have read into it, but there's a lot of people doing 18-6, where they fast for 18 hours and they eat for six. If you were to eat, take this during your six hours, it would probably, and, and not take it during your 18, it would probably even have benefits there, enhancing the absorption of the protein you're allowed to eat in the six-hour period, which for me would be two trips to the Golden Corral. Well, there's been some scientific... <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's been some scientific studies on fasting uh, and just eating around the workout. So like protein timing and stuff, showing that as long as you're consuming the protein around the workout before, during, after, uh, you're still getting the benefits of, of uh, muscle protein synthesis, even in fasted states. Okay. So if you take that six hour window in an 18-6, you're likely to, you know, and you're working out and whatever, you're likely to see uh, a lot of them know, work, at least yeah. less breakdown. A lot of them work out fasted from what I've understood from yeah. a lot of people, of course, yeah. and then eat post-workout. Yeah. 
or they start drinking it during. I mean, there's a, there's so many different intermittent fasting protocols. And John Berardi actually has a great book on it. We actually did it, got his blood work done. It's the most comprehensive guide I've seen. It's free. I, th I believe it's free online. So take a look at that because he, he does, he's done more to make me understand what fasting is in one book. I mean, if you go to the different ones like the Lean Gains or whatever it's called, you see 20 different ways to fast. In my opinion, it's, it was always a way to make me not want to go to church or temple. You yeah. know, it's like I'm not following any religion that makes me not eat. You know, that's what, and then when this yeah. came out as a fad, I'm like, Oh man, this is something we need to address because people are doing it. Whether, whether I love it or not, it's something that people are loving and getting results from. My theory is just like CrossFit. Everybody thinks I hate CrossFit, right? I love CrossFit. The only thing I'm scared of is sometimes the form from the instructors is a bit whack. But here's the deal. Anything that gets Americans or any other country for that matter, Australia has more obese people than us now, off their butts and gets them to be healthier, prevent type 2 diabetes and all that, like we talked about extensively yesterday, I don't care if they're running in a hamster wheel. I'm, I'm with you, brother. So CrossFit, good. Intermittent fasting, if you're controlling your macros, it's better than just doing the normal. Uh, yeah. I will say this. If you're complete fasting, unless you're doing it for a really long period of time, which uh, I think would be hard anyways, complete fasting and exercise just doesn't mix in my mind. I mean, you hurt your, you know, if you're not fueling yourself for exercise, even if you are the, the faster before, but consuming during or after, you got to put that in there for to enhance the muscle protein synthesis. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you're 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 hurting yourself. So I, I think you want to be careful exercising completely yeah. fasted if it's a this would be a term. great discussion to have on a separate video. I'd like to do that before I leave. Um, Robinson DUP, um, a natural bodybuilder. So he's going to ask this again. We're going to address it just to uh, just because this is a little more concise than the last one. They say it's banned substance free, but I see IGF-1, which I believe is banned in some organizations. But also WADA did not ban. So does it depend on the organization and their banned substance list? Again, it's it's so small of a Yeah, and every and, I, and I'll let David talk about this as well, but every every organization has whether they have their own list or they refer to the WADA list, but you know, we, we test through um, informed choice for, for any banned substances so you can be sure there's nothing in there. Um, but Again, the IGF-1, we're not talking about synthetic IGF-1 that may be delivered through you know, a subcutaneous injection right. uh, that would raise your levels well above normal ranges, which would test positive, and that's, you know, you know particular athletes um, who, who've done that. The, the BioGrow is, while it does have the presence of IGF-1 to help with the protein synthesis amplification, you're, you shouldn't test out of normal ranges. But again, to your point earlier, David, you know, that depends also how, you know, do you consume the whole bottle? You know, what what is uh, what are the parameters under which you're using BioGrow? Well, some of, some of the things that are on various banned substance lists uh, date back quite a long time ago, uh, before the research even came out proving that they shouldn't be on the banned substance list. Uh, but due to the organization of banned substance groups and some uh, groups producing various uh, uh, ingredients, there became some Butting heads, and there's some there's some ingredients that are being tested now by by the by the banned substance group saying okay maybe we're a little quick to yeah. to ban these things. Uh, colostrums yeah, on on banned substance list in some cases like that's been proven over and over that you know why why was it on the banned substance list? Well, what I'm wondering is why in your office there's a bunch of deer antler velvet. Well, I'm keeping that for me on a side thing. We don't we don't talk about that on yeah it's, it's a drug right? testing policy. Yeah, it's yeah. His, his little secret. No, I, I still want to know who's out there in the forests and in the fields scraping all the antler velvet off those deer, deer antlers in order to fill enough bottles to, to, to fill the demand out there. You know, it's that. funny you're talking about that. I drove up to my house last night and there were three deer right at the end of the so drive. Did you go their antlers? I'm thinking I'm jumping out and grabbing something. And what the hell is velvet? Is that like a part of the deer antler? Is that like well, a It's very, very soft at first. Until so it, it feels gets like hard. velvet. Actually, yeah. they scrape them off. We see them at our house scraping. One, they'll scrape that velvet off and just so the hard antlers are there. Onto the, onto so the I, tree I branches guess the things. deer antler velvet is from that soft stuff. So you can probably go over to a bunch of uh, trees and just grab Just like trees? Things. Like trees, baby. Sounds but good. But that's one of those supplements that, in my opinion, I'm sorry, I have to speak out. It's an embarrassment to our industry. It's an embarrassment to society. It's an embarrassment to America to have a football player admitting to taking it. I mean, if I were Ray Lewis, I'm like, look, I'm not taking deer antler. I'm on the real shit, all right? Yeah. I mean, don't accuse me of taking deer antler. I'm much bigger than that. But baseball I, I players think. also rub flaxseed oil on their yeah. skin, too. Yeah. I plead the fifth. I, came I was a strength coach in Miami, so uh, oh, God. I plead the fifth. 
Yeah, well, this is the perfect one to end on from Sean G. Are there any side effects like stomach problems or issues if using this product? Have you heard any any side effect reports? Well, if you are utilizing protein at a, at a higher rate, um, there could be some side effects that come with it, gas, cramps, bloating, and so forth. We haven't had any that I'm aware of, uh, but in theory, uh, that's just a that normal day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if a little more nitrogen build up. Uh, I mean, you know, you, urine or Mark, you, like that, you're intolerant to lactose. I'm intolerant I, to everything. I have the worst. And you, you, in the you do okay with this, right? I do you, fine with it. Okay, yep. so, and and we have an allergen listing on this, and we've been clear on everything. Uh, we do know that if there's particular milk allergens, and I can't remember the specific names. I know one of the gentlemen in Europa has them, and we we've pretty much instructed him to probably steer clear because we don't want to be responsible for. Uh, you know, an unfortunate episode of an allergic reaction, but you know, all the allergens were cleared from stomach disorders, um, you know, Crohn's and, and celiacs. We, we haven't heard anything from any of them that it has been disruptive to their their. Yeah, and let's stomach. understand. I mean, if you're going to try it uh, and you're concerned about that, I'm lactose intolerant. I have no problems with. I have it. a whole but bunch we, of lactate in both my but, bags. But if you decide to start taking BioGrow and then you're going to take some protein that you haven't taken before and mix the two of them and wonder why you're having some lactose issues or something, you know I mean? You gotta just add it to what you're doing now well, yeah. and then see if it causes any it's problems. Kind of like, that's yeah. advice for all supplements, I don't care what it well, is. Well, I remember creatine bloating people and they were taking it with 75 grams of dextrose to start. <laughs> like, no, you're just getting fat, bro. <laughs> um, that, that pretty much concludes the questions. Is there anything you wanna uh, summarize? I'll, 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 I'll close out my thoughts and what I've experienced so far, but is there anything you guys want to just add in? I mean, we covered a lot of material here. This is going to be broken up into multiple parts. Um, but what do you what do you guys, is there anything we missed? You know, Mark, I, I think one of the things that I'll add, you know, for your viewers, and, and you have very educated, um, you know, subscriber base and viewers and, and people that appreciate your honesty. And, and you and I go way back, and we've been around a long time, and... and We've had the fortune and opportunity to be involved in some really exciting things in this industry, and, and you know my history going back to launching uh, you know the first meal replacement through through Metrics, and then we launched creatine and commercialized that through Phosphagen, yeah. and you know here we launched um, beta alanine to the market, you know from from Roger Harris's you know studies and, and Mark Talon through through H Blocker, and so we've had the real unique opportunity to do some things that are very, very exciting. And this is one of those supplements that, again, they just don't come around very often, these opportunities to, to create an entirely new category. So I think, you know, when your viewers are looking at and trying to classify BioGrow, the difficulty is because it's not a pre-workout and not a test booster, and not a protein, it's, we're trying to figure out where to put it as a consumer, right? And there is no place. We're trying to create that. So, you know. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to just spend time really educating people on, on what BioGrow is and where it fits and that it is a brand new category that takes time to adapt to and understand. I mean, 10 years ago, no one knew what nitric oxide was. They thought that's what you ran your car on, you know, and you wanted to go yeah. faster. Now it's a staple and it's in everybody's supplement arsenal. And, and that's, you know, BioGrow just takes time to be educated and we certainly appreciate the time to allow us to, to, to educate the consumers on what BioGrow is. Yeah. The research from the performance side is really young in bioactive peptides in general. I mean, again, I think probably how many, how long ago was it that you learned what mTOR was? Probably most people still don't even know what it means, but are just. I still can't it out pronounce there. the actual. And, and the truth of the matter is, is we're, we're not, you know, scientists aren't even exactly sure of how that process really works. We just know that certain things make it work more effectively. So I think from that standpoint, it's still very, very new in it. And we're going to see other uh, groups coming with various other forms of bioactive peptides. You know, the funny thing is, it's been around for, for centuries, literally. Uh, and it's been utilized in other forms of, uh, you know, for, for health purposes and things like that. But from a performance standpoint, it's still extremely new. And so there's, there's a whole lot of things to, you know, to understand. So one being sort of first to market and being part of this thing is, is huge. But I think from a scientific inquiry, for those that are really interested in this kind of thing scientifically, there's a whole lot more uh, that's going to be more exciting on the backside for those guys. Absolutely. Um, anything? I think we covered a lot. That was a lot around. of good questions. Great questions. Uh, you know, first off, as a skeptic to start, um, again, I can't, there's no control group with yourself. But reading the email, we have yet to get one negative email. And I was just telling you the story, we've got dozens of positive emails. We've sold 
they grew up to thousands of bottles, not hundreds anymore, it's thousands. And the thing is, is that the feedback you get, now when I like something, I don't go email somebody and say, like, if I bought like a carburetor for my car, I'm like, man, I'm gonna email Advance Auto Parts, you know? So for someone to like it enough to email you that they like it, they had to really like it. So the fact that we're getting this much positive feedback and not much negative is very promising. So this is a great category. I think it's very promising. There's still a lot to be learned and determined from it, but it's one of those things that it might be, and I said this before, it's, it's just from the people behind it. I do think it's worth a try. That's my personal opinion. Call me a show, call me whatever you want. My personal opinion is just the people who are behind this project are worth at least saying, you know what? If I can afford it, I'm going to take a risk, you know, or I'm going to take an educated risk on this. You know, uh, I'd, love to build, I'd love to be able to ask any of your consumers, anybody out there watching this thing, if you want to help us understand it better, I'd love to have them fill out surveys, tell us how they're using it, what they're doing. Yeah. That'll help us understand it. We'll compile it and post it up and let people know what we're what we're finding because again it is sort of this, this brand new thing and there is a lot of anecdotal evidence out there and I know most people are skeptics when it comes to that yeah. that type of thing but I'll tell you what if enough people can respond and give us that information uh, you know we'll be glad to share it yeah and we were just talking this morning about you know the pop and fizzle brands you know it's where they launch a product after the pre-sale it's done this has been just a constant grow so I mean the word of mouth is getting out and, and at least based on our sales trends you can usually tell pop and fizzle from the beginning yeah, I mean, we didn't run out and place 100 ads, pages of ads in the magazines no. to try to promote this. This has been a real sort of an underground, if you will. You know, we've went with, with beta testers and we've been out just beating the streets and educating people about what this product is. David's doing scientific conferences, you know, talking to the influencers in our industry. Um, you know, this is really one of those things where we just have to spend the time to educate people about what this category is. And, and my... You know, my hunch is pretty soon here, you're going to start to see a lot of people, uh, magazines and editorial and online, you're going to see a lot of information starting to come out about bioactive peptides as it gets more exposure and more momentum. Yeah, well, we're excited to be a part of this. Um, I'm excited to have the first video out because I'm getting all kinds of views. No, I'm really excited about being a part of this. Um, again, being a part, just being involved in any way in a, in a potential new category. You know. Well, I think when you posted this, you know, hey, you know, come on uh, YouTube and, and post your questions in the comments. You know, I wasn't sure how many comments you would get, but I got to tell you, when, 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 we, when you showed me the number of questions you had, I mean, that in of itself excited me. This is editing. That people. tells me that people are really interested in wanting to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that said, if you have any questions, Mark, M-A-R-C at TigerFitness.com. Do you have a customer service line you want to put out there? Um, we do have info at isatori.com, I-S-A-T-O-R-I.com, info at isatori. If you have any particular questions, certainly feed them through tigerfitness.com. If they're technical, we'll be happy to answer those as well. Uh, but Mark, man, I really appreciate you coming Thanks on. Thanks so much for having time. me, especially even after the running. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. And it's, you know what? It's, I got to break my fast. It's time to eat. Well, yeah. anyway, thanks so much, guys. And you know, category, again, creating a category, there's only so many things you can do. And there's only so many areas you can hit. So essentially creating a category, it's not a game. The finisher. Yeah, we recruit them, we ain't no blind sheep, so we teach for the movement. Look out, look out for one another, look in.